y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. It's another beautiful day here on the farm. I am out here in the high tunnel, high tunnel number three actually, and we are staking tomatoes. So these tomato plants are planted April 10th, I believe, give or take, April 15th, April 10th. And now they have grown quite a bit actually. We gotta come through here and suck the bottoms there and uh, stake these up first. I wanted to get them staked up first before we came through and did any work just so that we can have some support on the plants there. And they've got their first fire clusters, couple fire clusters coming out there. I started hitting them with, the, with that high potassium fertilizer so they could go ahead and start growing here. But we have Isaac there staking them. I uh, showed him how to do it last year and I'm super busy this year so I'm gonna teach him and show him how to do it. So he'll be doing this full tunnel here. And I'm just doing the traditional Florida weave method for now, just because we got other stuff to do, be doing here on the farm right now. So he's gonna stake this, put the first wire on. We're gonna come through here today, hopefully with the guys, and pull off those bottom suckers. And then we will uh, continue working. So the traditional Florida weave method, you run a while on this, uh, string on this side, you go through, wrap around, and then you come back on the other side. And you tighten the plants, you kind of smush the plants here between these two T-posts. And when he gets down around to it, he will, uh, I'll show you guys how to do it exactly. All right, so this is how it looks right here. You got the tomato plant between two strings. Strings are fairly tight. Got that first fire cluster. Whenever this plant keeps on growing, we're gonna prune everything up to that first fire cluster. So all these will fly off here, just like that. Pull everything off. Everything below that first wire there, or first wire, the first string. Clean everything up. We'll let we'll these plants get a little more size to them after we stake them, but just look at that. Nice and beautiful, healthy looking plants. First flower cluster. We're gonna go ahead and leave this, the, that suck, sucker to keep on growing. We have Isaac here doing a real nice job of staking these. So, yep. <music> Alrighty, so that's how it looks whenever they just got done staking. Isaac has some stuff to do, so uh, he uh, let me finish up here. So I got one more row done, we should be done. So here at the end, all we do is uh, get it and just tie it up here like this, about the center. Uh, about, about the same height of the plant there, about the middle of the plant. Maybe a little lower, just, these will be thrown out at the end of the season anyway. Just tie a knot <laughs> that holds. It doesn't really matter which way or which one it does. Then we got the fancy box here on, we got this pipe. This is a regular pipe from the current system there. All you do is you hold this tight with one hand, hold the, the pipe tight there. All you do is run along here, comes pretty smoothly there. Go around the post there, make sure it's nice and tight. Let's go around just like that, just fast and easy. One right after another. Make sure you catch the plants there. There's a dead plant there as well. Just like this. Fast, easy, simple. Doesn't get any smoother than this. That's why I come through here, take a high tunnel full 10, 12, 20 minutes. On a good day, 10 minutes. On a slow day, 20 minutes. Just like this. Get down 96 foot pretty quick. Just like that. Pick up the plants if I need to. This is always the best time to stake them whenever they're young. The plants are still holding up there. See, just like that. Got to the end, a couple times around here, and work yourself back just like this. Sandwich those plants between there. Pretty all. So that's how you stake tomatoes. That's how we do it here on our farm. The Florida weave method. And the varieties we have in here are three rows red deuce, one row Carolina gold, three rows red deuce. I gotta get that kerosene cannon out of here. We are past the frost date here in southwest Missouri. 
usually I'd say about the middle of uh, April, but every single year we've been getting frost around the 20th, even past that. But May 1st is pretty much a guaranteed frost free date. So I'm taking that out of here. I mean, it's we're in a high tunnel anyway, so it doesn't really matter because they're protected. But all you kind of do is just sandwich the plants between these two um, posts here, just like that. And what we're next thing you're doing here is after they're staked, come through here and rip off these bottom suckers there. These four bottom suckers just for aeration of the plants. So this is growing for no good reason here. And other than that, there's not much pruning to do on these determinant tomato plants. So it goes pretty quick. I'll probably have the guys come through here fast and easy, just like that. Take off those bottom suckers and let the plant grow. Like I mentioned earlier, I started them on that high potassium fertilizer and they should be pumping out some serious tomatoes here pretty quick. So these plants are growing. So in this high tunnel number three here, I am not gonna do what I did number one. I'm gonna show you guys what I did over there. As the tomato plants grow in here, I'm gonna go ahead and stake them up uh, periodically as, as the season goes along, just because these red deuce tomato plants, they're not a really, really vigorous variety. So they grow about waist high to me. I'm six foot four, that gets kind of tall, four to five foot tall. And then they just pump out that fruit and they're pretty much done for. On other varieties, I know the BHNs are very a very vigorous variety, so they'll continue to grow and they're more of a semi-determinant. But as the season con continues here and progresses, I'll be coming through here weekly and doing the Florida weave method, staking them up, and that's about it. Fertilizing is a whole different game. I mean, that's pretty much a daily thing. Water is a daily thing. But let's go ahead and jump in number one here and show you guys what I did. But the guys right here, they are picking strawberries out of the high tunnel. So the majority of these are I'll be on here. These will be going into our apple cider, not apple cider, strawberry, strawberry slushies. We sell a whole lot of those and I'll talk to you guys about those varieties later on. But here's high tunnel number one. Look at this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful fruit hanging. These two here will be ready by, I mean, a couple days already bronzing up there. Big Dina's massive fruit, absolutely beautiful. So in here on these determinants, these are Red Deuce. And I went ahead and finished up this trellis system. Like I said, Red Deuce is not a vigorous variety, so it doesn't grow too tall. These will probably grow by the end of summer, about the eight tallest tee post. But, you know, look at this. The fruit is dangling from here and it's sagging down this trellis system. So if I want to put up all these lines here, I could have came back through here and put a few more supports of wires but you know you try things out live and learn experiment that's the biggest thing try things out on your own skin figure out what works and when you figure something out then you will uh continue doing it so i don't think i'm ever going to do this pre-trellised determinate variety ever again just because the plants get so heavy full uh, with a full crop load of fruit that they drag down this trellis system and if i had the room and space and energy I'll come through here and put a few more wires down through here or a few more strings. We're tying, we're tying high density apples now. So that's what I'm talking about wires here. But whenever we get a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous fruit on here. This is a 30 pound per plant here. That's how my tomatoes are going to pick off these things. They get so heavy, they start dragging this clusters down. So here on these big dinas, I started taking off these bottom leaves. First of all, for aeration and on indeterminates, these greenhouse varieties, you only need 12 leaves or branches of leaf. So we count this as one up here. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 12. So this is a whole leaf right here. And uh, look at these things. Absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, looking good. We just, these will start ripening up here pretty quick. But yeah, not too bad. So all kinds of tying methods here on the farm, trying new things out, seeing what works, seeing what makes my life a whole lot easier. But so far, there is uh, no easy way around it. But after my first year growing tomatoes uh, in 2018, I believe, that was my first year, we got this high tunnel up. I told myself I'm never growing indeterminate tomatoes in my life just because they're just a kind of a pain to prune and stake. And now I got these three rows of big dinas out here. And the reason I planted these big dinas, if you guys don't know, I'm trying to get production for with about two weeks earlier. And 95% and of the time, these indeterminates are about two weeks earlier to ripen up compared to the determinants. So that's what I was hoping. 
and it is happening we got a couple turning red here and before we know it we'll have that bottom cluster there we're going to start turning red on these red deuce will still be another couple weeks before even some of them start turning red so that's just part of it part of trying new things out you know don't be scared to try a couple rows of something like this here i did a whole, whole half a high tunnel here and i'm not too happy but we'll work around it we'll get it done that's how you live you live and learn try things out see what works see what doesn't work keep on moving on Alrighty, y'all so this is going to be pretty much it for today if you guys haven't already go and hit that subscribe button go and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever i do upload a video i want to say thanks for watching up to this point y'all have a good day we'll see you next time <music>